Hello students, how are you all? Today we are going to talk about Thomas Gray's poem Allergy written in a country churchyard. This poem is prescribed on the syllabus of BA second year pass course English literature for Mohanlal Sukharia University Udaipur. We will discuss this poem in five lectures. So to begin with in lecture one, let's talk about Thomas Gray first of all. Thomas Gray was born on 26th December 1716 in Cornhill, England and he died at Cambridge on 30th July 1771. Thomas Gray was a British poet and he belonged to the pre-romantic period of English literature. The pre-romantic period or the age of sensibility or the age of Johnson as it is called was a period between 1745 to 1798 or 1785. It was a period between the death of Alexander Pope, the major neoclassical figure, and it preceded the revival of Romanticism in England, which came in 1785 with the, the French Revolution and in 1798 also a major occurrence that is the publication of the lyrical ballads by William Wordsworth and Samuel Taylor Coleridge. So these two events, the death of Pope, the death of Alexander Pope and uh, the beginning of romantic period with lyrical ballads. This period between these two events is called pre-romantic age, pre-romantic period, age of sensibility or age of Johnson. For uh, after the name of Dr. Samuel Johnson, who was a major literary figure of that period. He was a literary critic. So Thomas Gray belongs to that period. And in our previous video lecture uh, on, on William Cooper, we have already discussed the characteristics, the salient features of this age that English poetry was, was coming out of the shackles of neoclassicism, the neoclassical period, and it was heading forward towards romanticism. The form of the poems, the form of poetry was still neoclassical in the use of figures of speech, in the use of, uh, for example, personifications and other figures of speech. And in the approach of poetry writing, as Thomas Gray himself said, that the language of age is never the language of poetry. The language of the masses is, the, is never the language of poetry. So his conception was that the language of poetry is very polished, ornated, and stylized language, latinized, formal, and which has a distinctive literariness or literary character about it. On the other hand, William Wordsworth believed that the language of common people, the language of the ordinary fox, rural fox, rural people, should be the language of poetry and which he tried to do in his own case, in his poems, some of which were published in Lyrical Ballads. And Lyrical Ballads, in fact, was an experiment regarding regarding this phenomenon of Wordsworth. So now age discussed. 
there were some more romantic poets, uh, pre-romantic poets, uh, along with Thomas Gray, William Cooper, William Collins, James Thompson, and William Blake came at a later stage. So these were the poems, uh, these were the poets of, of pre-romantic period. Thomas Gray was educated at Eton College and uh, there he had some very celebrated figures as his friends, Horace Walpole and Richard West. Horace Walpole was the son of Sir Robert Walpole, who was the Prime Minister of England uh, at that time. And Richard West was the son of a very prominent lawyer of England, of London at that time. And uh, later, Thomas Gray went to Cambridge University for further education and he remained there till his life, uh, till his death. By nature, Thomas Gray was a very studious, philosophical, reflective, scholarly personality. He used to like, he used to read and read a lot for hours together. He was uh, so induced with, with the antiquarian knowledge and history, literature and other arts. And it is said that he was one of the most learned people of his time in Europe. In 1742, his dear friend Richard West died and it proved to be a major setback for him. And uh, he wrote some poems in memory of his friend Richard West. One of the poems is Sonnet on the Death of Richard West. And the poem which we are going to discuss, Allegy written in the country churchyard, is also it is also said that it was occasioned by the death of Richard West. But later, um, uh, but as, as Gray went on writing the poem, it took a different shape, a different character. It became more universal rather than being remaining personal. So among his major works are Ode on a Distant Prospect of Eton College, Him to Adversity, Sonnet on the Death of Richard West, The Progress of Poesy, which came out in 1757, and the same year, The Bard. These two are two Pindaric odes by Gray. The Descent of Odin, The Fatal Sisters, and The Triumph of Oyen. These are the poems which proved instrumental, which became instrumental in the romantic revival in English poetry. So as I said earlier that the poetry of pre-romantic period was, was a journey from neoclassicism to romanticism. So it's a transition period. Allergy written in a country churchyard. As far as Gray's poetry is concerned, it is a manifestation of sensitivity, melancholy. It reflects concern for common people and nature. Universal emotions, feelings, truisms. They are the hallmark, they are the hallmark of, his, uh, of his poetry. And as I said earlier, that's in 1742, Richard West died and it is said that the driving force behind allergy written in a country churchyard is the death, is possibly the death of Richard West. Although he had already written a sonnet on Richard West's death, it was begun in 1742 
and it took Gray a very long time to complete this poem as it was it was completed in 1750 and it was first published in 1751. It is an algiac tribute to his dear friend. But rather than mourning the demise of an individual, this allergy expresses universal emotions for the general human lot of common man and takes the form of serious meditations on mortality. Mortality means the the phenomenon of dying, that human life is transient, it is temporary, it is not permanent, we cannot live permanently in this life. We human being is born one day and on one fine day he has to leave this earth, he has to leave this body here and he has to die. So this phenomenon is called mortality. So in this poem, Thomas Gray seriously reflects on, he meditates on the phenomenon of mortality that everything decays and dies and nothing remains here on this earth. Death is the truth of human life. Human life is not forever, it cannot remain forever. He is born one day and he has to die one day. So this is the general emotion of this poem, Allergy, written in a country churchyard. As far as an allergy is concerned, an allergy is generally, it is a poem which articulates a complaint. It expresses a complaint, lament, loss, and it is a poem of consolation which consoles, which formally laments, grieves and mourns the death of a particular person. And this famous poem, as I have already said, that it was begun in the year 1742 and it was finished in 1750 and it was written or meditated in the churchyard the place where Gray wrote it is called Stock, Stock Podges, where Gray's mother and aunt resided after his father's death. There is, however, little in the poem to localize it as far as its, uh, its geographical background is concerned. But in other words, it could have been inspired by any country churchyard. The feelings and thoughts expressed in this poem are, are, are permanent and universal. For Gray, here, becomes the singer of the humble, poor, neglected folk of the village. And this poem has a simple philosophy and a calm, calmness of emotion. And as far as this allergy is concerned, it is considered as one of the five greatest English allergies. This allergy, as it is called, is really a reflective poem in a plenitive mood and not a lament over a dead person. It is perhaps the most widely known poem in the English language. It expresses perfectly what most people have often felt and it does so in language so inevitable that we flatter ourselves that we could have expressed ourselves exact, exactly thus. The moral note and, that characterizes it also appeals to the common reader. So this is the general, general emotion, the feelings of this poem. Now let's read the poem and appreciate it. Allergy written in a country churchyard. The curfew tolls the knell of parting day. The lowing herd winds slowly over the lee. 
The plowman homeward plods his weary way and leaves the world to darkness and to me. The curfew tolls the knell of parting day. The lowing herd winds slowly over the lea. The plowman homeward plods his weary way and leaves the world to darkness and to me. Now fades the glimmering landscape on the sight and all the air a solemn stillness holds save where the beetle wheels his droning flight and drowsy tinklings lull the distant folds. The Curfew The curfew was a bell which was rung at eight o'clock in the evening for putting out fires in the homes. It was a custom which was introduced by William the Conqueror. The word continued to be applied to an evening bell long after the law putting out fires ceased, but it is now not so used. The curfew tolls the knell of parting day. The poet hears the evening bell which indicates the death of day and the coming of night. The curfew is here regarded as a death bell for the day. The idea is that the day has ended. And the belowing sheep, the lowing herd, lowing herd means belowing sheep, a herd of sheep, a collection of sheep, a group of sheep making noises, making noise. The sheep producing their natural sounds to low it means to make the loud noise as is produced by, by ox, by oxen. Wind, wind means to walk not straight but turning frequently to meander, to proceed in a winding course. The word describes the homeward journey of, of the sheep in the evening, walking not straight but in a curved irregular course. In these lines the poet says that the, the poet builds up an atmosphere of evening in these lines. The evening bell is ringing, thus marking the end of the day. The sheep are returning to the village over the pasture land. They are walking in a winding course as is their habit and as they walk, they produce their natural sounds. The farmer is also walking. The farmers are also walking heavily homewards, tired of the day's labors. The darkness of the night is descending upon the world and the poet finds himself all alone in the churchyard. So in this way, the poet depicts a landscape, a rural landscape at the time of evening when the darkness has descended, is slowly descending and the farmer, farmers, they are coming from their farms, from their fields and they are going homeward. They are going home with their oxen, with their, with their cattle with their sheep and other animals and the poet is sitting there and he says that they, they are all leaving him leaving the poet all alone who is sitting in the darkness and who is watching this scenario and narrating it and, and writing a poem about it Now fades the glimmering landscape on the sight and all the air a solemn stillness holds save where the beetle wheels his droning flight and drowsy tinklings lull the distant folds. The atmosphere of descending night is continued here from the preceding stanza. The twilight is deepening into darkness and the landscape which was dimly visible in the twilight has now become invisible to the eyes. Silence and an air of solemnity, seriousness, marks this hour. No sounds of vulgar mirth are heard and the silence is broken only by the dull humming sound of the beetle in its circular flight and by the tinkling of bells round the necks of sheep who are being lulled to sleep by this tinkling in their folds situated at some distance from the churchyard where the poet is. The word fold here means enclosure, that is a place where sheep are kept.
There is no sound except the droning of the beetle, the tinkling of bells in the sheep folds, and the occasional hooting of the gloomy and lonely owl. The owl's cry is heard from the ivy cover, covered church tower, which is the home of the owl. The owl cries whenever some flying bird or insect goes too near the tower and invades the secret spot, which has been dwelling place of the owl for a long time. It would seem as if the owl were complaining to the moon about undue interference with his privacy. So today we are going to discuss these two uh, stanzas from this poem. And I would suggest you to read it and meditate on, on the emotion which the poet has just started. Uh, the poet has uh, st started with, an, with a particular emotion and he is building a scene of an evening in a rural background, in a rural place. So read these two stanzas and meditate on these two stanzas and and imagine how the poet is building an atmosphere of evening and in our next lecture we will discuss this poem further thank you for listening and watching the video